Hey, Jonathan here. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to build an export function into your R Shiny Flex dashboards. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Now, this question comes from one of my students, Ricardo, uh, from my course, R Shiny Flex Dashboards and Interactive Data Visualizations. So he wanted to figure out, now that he's built these Flex Dashboards, how do you actually export some of the data out of them? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna quickly set up a Flex Dashboard. I'm just gonna come over to uh, our Markdown, Template, Flex Dashboard, click OK. Let's just make this a bit bigger. Just gonna get rid of some of the stuff here. So just a nice, simple template here. Um, over here, I'm going to use the library DT, which is uh, for data tables. This is a wrapper for a JavaScript library, which we'll take a look at more in a sec. And in here, I'm just going to go add data tables from the DT library. And let's pick some data set like Iris. There we go. So if we save that down, let's just call this um, export data. Um, how about flex dashboard export data? Okay, so now if we take a look at this, we can see our data here. Now, what we want to try and do is we want to add an export button so we can actually download this to say a CSV or an Excel file or something like that. So let me close that down. Now to do this, there's a few options that we want to add here. Now there's actually a whole ton of options that you can add to data tables. It is actually a very, very, very good library. So let's take a look to see if we can find out what some of these are. Now on data tables, I'm just going to go to the help file basically. So F1, we've got the DT package. And okay, we've got a whole bunch of options here. Now, RStudio has a really good page here on GitHub, actually. And this shows you how you can implement all of the options um, inside, <clears throat> uh, inside of R. And so it's uh, worth to have a bit of a look at this, actually, just to see all the different types of things you can do. Now, I'm going to come over to Extensions. And the extension that we're looking for is called Buttons, right? So here we can see an example that they've given for us. So if I basically just copy this entire thing, right, and you can see we'll end up with buttons that look like this. I can come back here and I'm just going to replace this. And let's hit run on that. Okay, so now we have our export buttons, and this is pretty cool. So if I hit the download button, uh, nothing seems to happen. Now, basically, uh, we do get something that pops up for the uh, for the print button, but these other buttons aren't working. Now, to make these work, all you basically need to do is click Open in Browser. Right, so now this is actually running through Chrome. So if I hit the, let me to keep on adjusting these windows every time. If I hit the CSV button, you can see that I got a CSV download over here. So if I can click on that. And that's going to open up in Excel with all of our data. Uh, but don't just leave, leave just yet because there's a few more things I need to show you about this. So we've got all of our data exported, which is fantastic. We've got a hundred 
and 50 records here. I'm just gonna close that down. Now, right now, this is a standalone Flex dashboard. So the cool thing about this is that you could use some sort of, uh, you could um, use some sort of page generator or something like that to generate lots of these pages. Um, and they will uh, be available on simple web hosting. Now, often what we want to do though, is we also want to embed these inside a Shiny application. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to type in Runtime Shiny. Okay. Now, when I add uh, Runtime Shiny, what I also need to do is I need to come down here and I need to type in the function Render Data Table. Okay. And just within the curly brackets, take all of this, stick it up into here. Oops. Okay, and now I'm gonna run this again. And you're gonna see something that uh, at first I thought was a little bit annoying, but I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So again, let's open this in browser. So I've got 10 records being displayed here, but we know that we have 150 records. If I click download CSV and open this up, What you'll see is that there's only 10 records actually being uh, returned here. Um, and at first I thought that this was pretty annoying, uh, um, that it was some sort, of, uh, some sort of bug. But actually, in a way, this is actually a pretty cool little thing because what Shiny does for you, instead of sending all of the data across at once, uh, what it's doing is it's only showing the data that's actually being called for. So. If I take a look at this, actually, if I go to, if I right click on this and click on inspect, okay. What we can basically see here, let me just switch over to say something like network, is that every time I click on one of these pages, you can see the data is being returned for basically just that page. And so if we have like a quite a large data set, it actually re reduces the amount of data that needs to be transferred, which is actually a really, really good thing. But that doesn't really solve our problem just yet of how do we make this download all of the data and not just the 10 records that we see uh, on screen at uh, any one point in time. Now to do this, we need to go into the documentation a little bit, um, a little bit more. So if we go over to data tables, dot uh, data tables dot net right this is the underlying JavaScript library that um, the DT library actually runs on top of and so if we go into some of the documentation we can look at extensions and the extension that we're using is called buttons right and what this does is it gives you a little bit of extra information. Okay. So here we can see that um, we're using this uh, DOM configuration here. And basically what this is, is all the different components of the data table that are being displayed. So for the buttons, we use the B component, right? So, okay. And so it puts the buttons at the top. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed is that there used to be a uh, little pagination button, uh, sort of drop down menu up the top here, which shows how many items that we can see at any one point in time. Now, this has disappeared actually uh, when, uh, when we added the buttons. And the reason for that is that that option is this option right here, L, right? So to add that back in, 
what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and we are going to add see this is bf rtip uh, we're just going to add an l back in here so if we run that it's getting a little bit closer now we can get up to a hundred records okay now, so as you can imagine, what will happen is if I hit the download button here, it's going to download 100 records, but that's not all of our records. We have a 150. So we need to go one step further than that. So let me go back to the data table documentation again. So what we're looking for is um, uh, changing the length of the input control, right? So let's do a search for that. So length. Uh, okay, and here we have this right here. So this is uh, the length menu option. Okay. So you notice that this is all a slightly different format from R because this is all using uh, JavaScript. Uh, but this is what we need to add in here. We need to add the length menu. And you can see that uh, this is how we add uh, all, right? So all is basically negative one. Uh, but we don't want uh, negative one to show up in the drop down menu. We want it to say all instead. So that's more or less how we do it here. Right. Um, but we just need to do this in R, which would be something like this. Right. Now, let's get rid of the quotes around here. Okay. And this is going to be effectively be a list instead. We're going to change that to C. And C there. Let's get rid of those. Two brackets. Oops, I forgot the equal sign. Okay, there we go. This should do the trick. Open in browser. Okay, all. So that shows our 150 records. Let's download the CSV, open it up. And there we have our 150 records. So I hope you find that helpful. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, quite a few little bits and pieces that we've gone over here. But, you know, once you get into the details of things, you know, you've done the examples, you've kind of been through the courses, you've done all the basic examples. Uh, sometimes you want to take stuff a little bit further. And these are, you know, all the little niggly things that you have to try and figure out. So uh, I really hope that helps a lot. And I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot to keep the channel going. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.